Meet my new friend Bjorn. While he may seem like a friendly Viking companion, this guy is actually a network raider that transforms a Raspberry Pi Zero into a fairly powerful network security device that's capable of automated network and vulnerability scanning and even some automated exploitation. The best part is this tool is entirely open source and it only requires three pieces of hardware that you can pick up super easily and for pretty cheap and it's really easy to assemble. There's literally no complex wiring, it's just plug and play. In this video, I'm going to walk through every step to both set up the hardware and install Bjorn and get it up and running and then how to use it. I won't skip a single step and I'll show you everything along the way. First, let's take a look at the hardware you'll require to put this together. I'll drop some Amazon links down below if you want to check them out. The first thing you'll need is a Raspberry Pi 0W or 02W. You can use either one. I'm using a 02W myself. One thing to keep in mind is that the standard Raspberry Pi 0Ws don't come with header pins installed and soldered. So if you don't want to do any soldering, you can buy the version with the header pins pre-soldered and installed. It's a little bit more money, but then you don't have to solder them yourself. You'll usually see these part numbers denoted with an H at the end, so Raspberry Pi 0 to WH. Alternatively, you can just buy the header pins and solder them in yourself. The next thing you'll need is a 2.13 inch e-paper display. And then finally, you'll need a micro SD card. I'm using a 32 gig one. Additionally, if your computer doesn't have a micro SD card reader and writer built into it, then you may need to get an external USB one of those as well. To install the e-paper hat, it's literally as easy as just lining up the connectors on the hat with those male connectors on the Raspberry Pi and then just giving them a gentle push to attach them together and that's all it takes. Next, let's take a look at installing the Raspberry Pi operating system on the SD card. Raspberry Pi makes it super easy these days to install the Raspberry Pi operating system onto an SD card. So if you actually just head over to raspberrypi.com slash software, and then just scroll down here, and the easiest way is to just use the Raspberry Pi imager. So go ahead and download it for whichever operating system you're running your computer on right now. And then once you've got it downloaded and running, meet me back over here. Once you've got the Raspberry Pi imager opened up, it is very easy to flash this operating system to the SD card. So the first thing you'll need to do is just pick the Raspberry Pi device you're using. So for me, I'm using a 02W. And then you'll need to choose the operating system. We're gonna go with Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. This worked fine for me with the Bjorn tool and the installation script and everything. And then you'll just need to choose the storage device that you're gonna be writing to. Uh, so for me, it is this one mounted as D. I just have one. I, I would recommend if you have any USB uh, storage attached or any other SD cards, unplug them all except for the one that you want to write to because this will overwrite and reformat anything that you select here. So I always suggest <laughs> unplug any that you're not actually using or wanting to write to. And then it's as simple as next. And then we'll click here and we're going to want to edit the settings to make sure we can get in and have the username and password set up properly. So what I'm going to do here is change the host name to Bjorn. So it needs to actually be set to Bjorn. And then we'll set the username as well to Bjorn. And what I'm going to do to make mine super easy is also make the password Bjorn here. And then you'll want to go into services here and I'm actually going to use my public key for SSH in, but you can use password authentication uh, if you want. So I'm just going to click here and then hit save. And this is going to allow us then to easily SSH in without needing to set anything else up. And then we can hit yes here and then just get this warning that all the data is going to be erased. We'll hit yes. And then this is gonna take, honestly, probably about 10 minutes to write and verify. So if you want, go grab yourself a coffee or tea or your favorite beverage of choice. And I'll meet you back over here once it's done. Mine's done flashing to my SD card. So I'm gonna hop over to my workbench over here. And the first thing we'll need to do is just install the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. So it's as easy as just inserting it in. And now we can go ahead and power it on. 
One thing to keep in note is you'll want to make sure you are plugging into the bottom connector here. It's actually denoted PWR, that's the power one. So go ahead and plug your cable in and then you should see the green light start flashing to power it on. Once your Raspberry Pi is powered on and you've given it a few seconds to boot up and get connected to your Wi-Fi, the next step is gonna to be to SSH into it so we can actually set up that Bjorn tool. If you want a quick way to check if your Raspberry Pi is actually connected uh, to your network, most routers, if you go into their login page, have a client list that you can check out or it'll be called like DHCP list or something. So on mine, I've got this list here. We've got Bjorn and then also you can see the IP address as well, which can be nice in case your DNS is not resolving when you want to SSH into it. Since I'm on Windows 11, there's SSH built in. So I'm going to use that through the Windows terminal. If you're on Windows and you don't have that SSH built in, you can use PuTTY and install that and use it. And if you're on another operating system, then you probably know how to use SSH and you can just use the built-in clients there. So then to SSH, it's just going to be SSH and the username is Bjorn and then it's going to be at Bjorn here or you can use that IP address that we just checked out. And then because I actually set up the SSH uh, via RSA keys, it's just gonna automatically connect for me. Uh, if it's the first time connecting for you, it may ask if you wanna trust the authenticity of the key. So just hit yes to that or type in yes to that. And then if you're using password-based authentication, you may need to enter the password. Before we start installing anything, let's quickly hop over actually to the GitHub page for this project. I'll drop a link for it down in the comments below. The GitHub page has a bunch of great resources for it along with the source code that we're going to need. So first off, I just want to give a really big shout out to the creator of this. I'm not sure if he goes by Infinition or Infinition, but a huge thank you for this awesome open source software. Definitely go ahead and start it. I'm not logged into my GitHub account right now, but I have started this. So I would suggest, you know, tossing this a star if you are going to use it. And then what we're going to do is actually just scroll down here and there is an installation. So we can go right here to the installation. And the easiest way to install it is with this automatic installation script. So I'm just going to copy this here and then we can actually just paste it into our terminal here. So I'll paste it in and then I'm going to go with full installation here. So we'll hit one and run this full installation. And then it's going to ask you to select your e-paper display version. So if you bought a new one off of Amazon, then it's most likely going to be compatible with V2, V3 and V4. So I know for a fact it's tested with V4. So that's what I'm going to run with. So I'll go with four here. We'll hit enter. And then you may get a warning about the operating system and some architecture because this actually was designed for the Raspberry Pi Zero W, but it works fine on the 2W as well. That's what I'm running and I've installed it before. So just hit yes here. We'll hit Y and then enter. And then this is going to take probably 10 to 15 minutes depending on your internet connection. So this is another one where uh, go and grab a coffee, a tea or your favorite beverage and then meet me back over here once your installation is done. Bridge the gap between classroom learning and real world cybersecurity with TCM Security Academy. Our curriculum is designed for action, giving you the tools to tackle and resolve real cybersecurity challenges. Prepare to step confidently into the cyber frontline. Join us at academy.tcm-sec.com and turn learning into doing. All right, mine is done installing. So what I'm gonna do is hit yes to reboot. After you reboot your Raspberry Pi, the e-paper display should start up and show the Bjorn display with that Viking on it. If yours doesn't come up right away, don't worry, give it about a minute or so and then it should come up. Mine took a little while for it to first spin up the very first time I rebooted it. And then once that display is up and running and showing the, the Viking logo, then that means that you can actually now interact with it through its web server. So let's take a look at how to do that. So fire up your favorite web browser and then navigate on to HTTP colon slash slash and then it's 192.168.50.146 for me. So this will be whatever IP address your Raspberry Pi has and then that's on port 8000. So you'll go colon 8000 here. And then this will bring you over to the web interface for Bjorn, which is where 
you can actually see the results of the scans and the different attacks that it attempts. And you can also change the config settings for it. So let's take a look at some of the tabs here. For example, the first one we'll look at is the config page. And I won't go through all of the config here, but this is where you can change all the settings for things like the scan interval or what ports it's going to try, or if you want to have uh, blacklists, or for example, if you want to adjust the speed of the nmap scan. Uh, there's a bunch of settings in here that you can, can play with, so I'll let you check those out if you're curious to see more. The next screen we'll take a look at is the network tab, and this is where we can actually see the results of the nmap scan and any of the ports that it was able to identify as uh, being open. So on the left here, we've got the IP addresses and then host names if it was able to pick up here, but all the MAC addresses and then the various ports that were open are all shown here. The next tab that I want to show is the NetKB one, which is probably the most useful one. But before you're actually able to take a look at that one, if it's the very first time you are uh, running this, then you'll need to go into these settings here and then click on Create, Live Status, Actions, and NetKB. So we'll click that and we'll get the CSV files initialized. And now we can click here. And then this gives now a more detailed look at basically everything that Bjorn uh, can do and the results of it. So for example, here we can see those same results from the, the port scan or the nmap scan, so the network discovery. And then if you look at these columns here though, you can see if it attempted any of these other attacks. So for example, it's only gonna attempt uh, these various ones if it sees that it has the relevant services running. If we actually scroll over though here, you'll notice that we actually have a success for one of these. So it's tried to SSH brute force um, all of the hosts that it saw and had SSH on. And for this one right here, if we actually scroll back over, this is a Raspberry Pi that I have running on my home network that I just quickly intentionally changed the username and password for SSH to just admin admin. So it would be easily brute forceable, but this is what Bjorn is then going to go and try is any of the ports that are open that it has attacks for, it will automatically go and try and do those. So now, for example, if we want to see the results of those brute forces, we can go over to the credentials here. So here on the credentials page, we're able to see any of those brute force attacks that worked and the results of them. So for example, we have the one on that vulnerable Raspberry Pi. And of course, we just have the basic username of admin. So if we head back home, there's two last things I want to show. So the next one is you can actually go ho hover over this little picture of Bjorn himself. And then it'll actually show specifically what the display is showing. So you can actually see here, uh, this is how many targets it was able to identify. So this is hosts, this is the imports that are open, and this is the credentials here that it was actually able to steal. So it's showing us that we were actually able to steal one credential. And then when the different attacks or scans are running, it'll show. So right now it's just in idle. And then down here, we just get these cool <laughs> little uh, comments that come through. And then down at the bottom, this is our little Viking guy. That's kind of like the Ponagachi or Tamagotchi where uh, as we do more scans and pick up more targets and do more things, he'll level up as well. So the last tab that I wanted to show here is that we can actually set it to manual mode. So if we click that, now we can actually go ahead and run the various attacks or scans manually. So for example, uh, if we want to try uh, SSH brute force on one specific host, well, we can go here and then we can set the IP address from the list of hosts. So we want to try 146 again. And then if we need to, we can change the port as well. Then we just click execute attack and it will, will run that automatically. Uh, so this is also a good spot to take a look at all of the lists of the different attacks that can be run on this because there is quite a few here and you can play around then and actually just trigger these through here so if you want to go back to the automatic mode i uh, switch it to ai i don't actually think there is any uh, ai involved in this but if you switch it back to this then it will just start running those scripts automatically on the intervals that they are set 
that's it for this tutorial on how to set up and configure Bjorn. There's actually a lot more attacks and capabilities it has, so definitely encourage you to go out, build your own, and try it out yourself. If you do, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you are subscribed to the TCM Security YouTube channel.